Greetings and welcome. Today we are diving into a topic that is both fascinating and misunderstood, and I'm joined by Dr. Rena Malik, a urologist and pelvic surgeon who has dedicated her career to helping people better understand their bodies and their sexual health. Did you know that only 65% of women have an orgasm during sex compared to 95% of men? That's not because women are complicated or hard to figure out. It's because so many of us were never actually taught how the female body works, what female anatomy really looks like, and how arousal and pleasure unfold in a woman's body. I'm Dr. Rena Malik, and welcome back to the Rena Malik MD Podcast, your source for evidence-based information about sexual health and beyond. Today, I'm going to teach you the real science behind female pleasure, and we'll cover anatomy arousal, the truth about the G, spot and squirting, and practical techniques that can help you become a more confident lover. The truth is, most men get absolutely zero real education about female anatomy, and the same is true for many women. It becomes the blind leading the blind, and most people unfortunately learn about sex not from school, not from their parents, but from pornography, which is highly inaccurate and doesn't show what real sex is like in an actual relationship. So let's break it down starting with anatomy, because without understanding the map, it's pretty hard to explore the territory. The entire external area is called the vulva, not the vagina, though many people incorrectly use that word. The vulva includes the outer lips, called the labia majora, as well as the inner lips, the labia minora. These lips can vary enormously in size, shape, and color, and that variation is completely normal. Some people have longer inner lips, some shorter, some darker, some lighter, and all of that is part of the wide diversity of normal human bodies. Then we come to the clitoris, which is often misunderstood or overlooked. The clitoris sits on top of the vulva above the urethra and vaginal opening, and it is covered by a clitoral hood, similar to the way foreskin covers the head of the penis in men. What's remarkable about the clitoris is that it is the only organ in the human body that exists purely for pleasure. And it is the most reliable route to orgasm for most women. Now, here's what surprises most people. The tiny button you see externally is only the tip of the iceberg. The clitoris is actually a large internal organ that extends deep into the pelvis with two legs or crura that wrap around the vaginal opening. This organ contains over 10,000 nerve endings, which is nearly twice as many as the head of the penis. For decades, scientists underestimated this because early studies were done on animals, not humans, and they thought it contained around 8,000 nerve endings. Only in the last five years have we really understood just how complex and sensitive the clitoris is. Think about that 10,000 nerve endings all devoted to pleasure. The clitoris and penis are actually homologs, meaning they come from the same embryonic tissue, and that's why they respond similarly. The clitoris becomes engorged with blood and larges and becomes more sensitive during arousal, just like a penis does. Beneath the clitoris is the urethra where urine exits, and below that is the vaginal opening, a muscular canal that can accommodate penetration by a penis, toy, or fingers. Beneath the vaginal opening lies the perineum, the area between the vagina and the anus. That's the basic road map, but let's move into what people always want to know about, the G-spot. Almost every guy has heard about it and imagines it as some magical button that must be found, but the reality is different. The G-spot was first described in the 1950s by Dr. Ernst Gerdfenberg. But it's not a single spot, it's a zone about one to two inches inside the vagina on the front wall. This zone contains several structures, the internal parts of the clitoris, the urethra, periurethral tissue, and skin's glands, which are sometimes called the female prostate. Because of this complexity, stimulation here can feel pleasurable for some women, less so for others, and even uncomfortable for some. The clitoris still has more nerve endings overall, but the G-spot zone can be pleasurable because of the tissue and nerve network. If you want to explore it, the best approach is to start with external stimulation, build arousal first, then insert one or two fingers with a gentle come here motion toward the front wall of the vagina, paying attention to her responses. Some women love it, others feel neutral and some dislike it, and all of those reactions are normal. The point is to pay attention, not to hunt for treasure. Now, when it comes to arousal, here's a fundamental truth men and women often operate on different timelines. Most men can be ready to go within two to five minutes, while women typically take 15 to 45 minutes to become fully aroused. This difference often leads to problems because media and porn portray sex as fast, instant penetration and immediate orgasm. In reality, a woman's body needs time for blood to flow to her genitals for natural lubrication to develop and for the vagina to lengthen and expand in a process called tenting. If penetration happens before this, it can be uncomfortable or even painful. Another misconception is that lubrication equals arousal. Wetness doesn't always mean she's turned on, and dryness doesn't mean she isn't. Factors like stress, hydration, medication, age, and hormonal cycles all affect lubrication. That's why lubricants are a wonderful tool. Cheap, effective, 
and fun. There's no shame in using them and they can make everything more enjoyable. Now let's go deeper into what happens during arousal. The first stage is excitement, Lasting five to 20 minutes, blood flow to the genitals increases by up to 300%. The clitoris swells, lubrication begins, the labia change color and swell, and the vaginal lengthens. The cervix and uterus shift upward in vaginal tenting. Her heart rate and breathing increase, nipples may become erect, and some women develop a sex flush on their chest or face. Then comes the plateau phase, during which the clitoris may withdraw under its hood due to swelling, the lower third of the vagina narrows, and lubrication continues. Next is orgasm which for women can last 10 to 60 seconds, involving rhythmic pelvic floor contractions every eight tenths of a second along with uterine and anal sphincter contractions. This is hard to fake because the muscle contractions are involuntary and noticeable. Heart rate can soar to 120, 160 beats per minute, comparable to cardio exercise, and the experience is deeply immersive. After orgasm, there's resolution with relaxation and a return to baseline. Now let's demystify squirting, a topic clouded by porn-driven meths. Studies show 10 54% of women have experienced it, but it's not what most think. The fluid comes primarily from the bladder, but is not urine. It is diluted, chemically distinct, and contains prostate-specific antigen from skin's glands. Think of urine as coffee and squirting fluid as coffee-flavored water. It's usually clear odorless, sometimes slightly sweet, and typically expelled during intense arousal or orgasm. Some women can squirt, others can't, and both are completely normal. The problem is the pressure created by porn expectations making some women feel broken if they don't or embarrassed if they do. The takeaway is simple. It's neither the holy grail nor a flaw. It's just one variation of sexual response. Beyond anatomy, let's focus on practical tips to enhance pleasure. Your partner's body gives constant feedback, her breathing, muscle tension, sounds, and movements. If she leans into you, she's enjoying it. If she withdraws or becomes quiet, check in gently. Communication is crucial, though it can feel awkward at first. Asking her what she likes, inviting her to guide your hands, and reinforcing with positive comments like I love when you do that can transform the experience. Consistency is also key. When something works, keep doing it rather than switching techniques abruptly. Also, remember that pleasure is not limited to the genitals. Explore the whole body, neck, ears, brace, inner thighs, lower back, even feet. Many erogenous zones can heighten arousal when stimulated thoughtfully, but perhaps the most powerful aspect of female pleasure is mental. Women often orgasm more easily when they feel safe, relaxed, and emotionally connected stress, self-consciousness, or intrusive thoughts can block arousal. Many women experience spectatoring, mentally monitoring themselves during sex, worrying about how they look or how long it's taking, which distracts from pleasure. As a partner, you can counter this by affirming her, telling her she's beautiful, showing her you're enjoying the moment, and building intimacy outside the bedroom. Foreplay starts long before sex. Flirty texts, small touches, acts of care all build desire. Now let's cover some common mistakes to avoid. First, don't treat the clitoris like a doorbell. It's sensitive and requires varied, gentle attention, not rapid pressing. Second, avoid jackhammering fast, hard, repetitive thrusting may look good in porn, but usually doesn't feel good in real life. Third, don't change techniques the moment something is working. Consistency builds orgasm. Fourth, don't make it about your ego. If you start thinking you must make her climax, you're focusing on yourself rather than her. Fifth, don't ignore her feedback. If she guides you, follow her lead. Sixth, don't rush penetration. Remember, she often needs 30 minutes to be ready. Seventh, don't obsess over orgasm as the only goal. Intimacy and exploration matter just as much. To practice, plan a session focused solely on her pleasure, not penetration or climax, just curiosity and exploration. This will teach you more than any video ever could. Remember, sex is a skill like any other. You improve with attention, practice, and openness. So invest time, experiment, communicate, and enjoy the journey together. If you found this helpful, support the channel by subscribing, leaving a review, or sharing this with someone who could benefit. Together, we can break down myths, spread real science, and help more people experience healthy, satisfying, and joyful intimacy. Like and subscribe my channel for more interesting, informative videos.